Hey folks, Matt Leger here, Maple Grove Productions, vlog number two. Got a couple of updates to share with everybody. One, uh, not really a major update, but as you can see, I got the wood stove going. And actually, I want to show you guys something that I've been working on since last year. So you can see it's not going too hot in the front, which is something I'm always struggling with, is to build the fire here to get these pans to uh, have even heat all throughout. The last the last couple of pans over there, I don't have any trouble with, but right here for some reason it doesn't hold as, the heat as much, probably because of the, uh, the draft that's pulling the air in. But anyway, this um, shape here is what I've been experimenting with. So rather than build the teepee like most people do, which is what I was doing for quite a while, I put one log on either side and then I put my logs across as kind of a bridge and um, before doing that I, I build my fire between the two logs with my kindling and uh, newspaper and stuff. Seems to be working pretty well. Once I get it going here in the middle I can add my logs on top and it uh, keeps its shape very well. The two logs on the end take longer to burn through, obviously, because they're right on the on the bottom of it. But yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about my little fire design. <laughs> like I said, it's nothing major, but just something I wanted to share and see if I can get some feedback out there on that. Maybe you guys know a better shape that you can build your, your fire with, or something that might help me to get this part at the front hotter. So, yeah, <laughs> the uh, chimney is all fixed. I took the ladder down. I'm going to leave it for now. And the chipped paint, what I'm going to do with that is uh, I'm just going to spray regular black spray paint up there. It doesn't get enough heat to really worry about anything. It doesn't have to be high heat resistance uh, paint or anything like that. But definitely a lesson learned, as I said last time. Um, if I don't have any black spray paint, I don't know if I do or not, but... It may stay like that, it's not going to hurt anything, it already has a few layers of paint on it, plus the metal is in relatively good shape, so it doesn't need the paint, it's just to hide the all the chipped mess, and get it not to chip maybe a little bit more. That's about it, the chimney was crooked, it needed a couple extra screws at the top where I didn't replace, I fixed that, so the chimney's all good for 2019, and I think what I've decided just now is that this wood stove is roaring. I just need to fix the flashing over there, which I'm gonna do now. But this thing's roaring, so um, I'm just gonna leave it. It doesn't really need the paint. It's rusted, yes. It's probably best to uh, use a wire brush and just get all of that stuff off of there. But for this season, I think I may leave it and focus my energies on other things. I think it's important to, uh, to determine what you wanna put your time and energy into and if it's really worth putting all that time and energy and money into it where you can just focus on something that could be more productive. On a side note, little fun fact about Leah the Wonder Dog here, she has actually consumed <laughs> two and a half cedar bushes. See that spot where she is? That was actually covered all in cedar bushes, just like over there. I don't know if cedar is actually good for dogs or not, but she's been chewing it. She's had no ill effects from it, but boy, you're like a beaver. You're a beaver dog. She has completely consumed two and a half cedar bushes. So we're gonna have to get you some more bones and sticks so you leave these poor cedars alone. Yeah, oh, you're a good girl. Well, there's a break in the wind here and Leah's somewhat quiet. I will show you also the uh, additions or renovations I guess we did to Leah's doghouse. Go sit, sit, sit. I'm trying to show them your doghouse, sit. No, you sit, stay. Day. So it's all filled with straw there at the bottom and uh, we finished the sides. Yeah, show them how it works. Great. Finish the sides here to keep the wind out, stuff some straw in all the little cracks, keep it as insulated as possible. I mean, she doesn't stay out here long and <laughs> cold like this, not super cold, but we had some, some, some times, some temperatures that dropped to like minus 40. So you can't leave your, your pets out for more than five, 10 minutes at a time. But on days like this, you love it, don't you? Because you're a snow dog. Yeah. 
German Shepherd Husky. She loves it out here. But even on days like this, zero degrees, you know, minus five, minus 10, I wouldn't leave her out here more than 15, 20 minutes. So, but she does have her doghouse. So if she gets cold, she can go in there, nice and insulated. I went in there to test it out and it's gotta be a good 10 degrees warmer in there at the very least. So it is working. Uh, in, in the spring, maybe we'll come around and all these spots that have the straw, we'll just put some kind of a sticky substance in there, maybe a tar or something more natural like a resin. See if we can fill that up. Maybe even pitch of some kind, I don't know. We'll have to get creative with it and uh, really insulate it to be as, as warm as possible. It's a good little uh, experimentation house. This is all made from pallets. Pallets and just some old scrap aspenite that we had lying around as well as uh, cupboard doors here at the top. So you know, you use what you have. So, but she loves it. And it's amazing how much straw will actually insulate something, especially if you keep uh, keep the animal off the ground as much as possible. Straw is just amazing stuff. Putting in a greenhouse back here too that was in the plans. It still is, but I think it's going to end up being a freestanding structure either in the backyard or in the front somewhere. It'd be nice if it was close to the chicken coop, ideally, right? But I was thinking almost of doing something in here. We got this back porch. It's got good light, but unfortunately this is facing west and south is over there. So we really wouldn't get that much unless we took down the roof and made a skylight of some sort. So probably not going to happen, but a, a greenhouse for sure is in the works. And of course, our treehouse. We've got to finish the treehouse for the kids. My dad and I are almost done. We've got one more side of the roof to put up, make a ladder, a few other additions, maybe some siding and shingles, and we'll be good to go. Other than that, just looking forward to rediscovering all these things. The chickens, we're going to bring in some chickens in the spring probably, maybe in the summer or fall. That's going to be the chicken coop over there. Lots of uh, stuff to do on that one as well. And then again, rediscovering our hoogle mounds, our our everything, our, our hazel birds, our raised beds that are buried in snow over there, our Korean pines. I mean, it's, it's going to be an exciting time. Can't wait. But first, maple syrup. Anyway, like I said, a couple quick updates for us today. Nothing major, but we're having fun and we're getting things ready and it's going well. So tune in next time for another episode, another vlog, and uh, maybe we'll try and cover something a little bit more than just uh, fire design. <laughs> Get some uh, dialogue going, hopefully, with all you guys. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Drop a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification icon. Make sure you don't miss anything going on here because we got a lot. 2019 is going to be a great year. I've been saying it. I'll say it once. I'll say it again. My inner groundhog has spoken. It's going to be a good year. It's going to be, I can't promise good weather, but. <laughs> so take it from me get ready for it hope you have a good year hope you are getting ready if you're doing maple syrup and everything's going well in your prep check out my vlog number one if you want a couple tips on on what i do to get ready in the season based on you know everything that uh like i discussed before about um, my grandparents living here for so long and following their lead and one quick correction just for my grandfather's sake because i want to give him as much credit as I can for all his amazing work and expertise and for sharing his skills with me over the years. He hasn't been making maple syrup for 30 years. I, I've been saying this, but it's been more than 30 years. My grandfather, I believe, is 87 years old and maybe even 88. I'm not sure now. He's, he's getting up there. And, um, and I really want to give it to him that he has shown me everything I need to know about maple syrup. And he's been at it for be closer to maybe even 86 years. <laughs> as long as he's been alive, he's been making maple syrup, basically. And I wanted to clarify that, that. That's probably an extra 50 to 60 years for his experience. So that's what I'm working with here. He's made some modifications over the, over the time that he did the syrup himself here. And that's what I would consider 30 years. But... In reality, he's taken all the old world maple syrup techniques and and adapted his own with very limited technology, just what he had available and what made sense to him in, in this design. So anyway, thanks for watching, my friends. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.